Don't get hit is always some pretty troll advice in ARPGs, however when it comes to tier 4 lightless arbor it's actually a solid recommendation. This is a massive AoE occurring on the left side, it will then occur on the right side and it will always go in this order, the left side of your screen followed by the right side of your screen. Getting to the lightless arbor is fairly easy. It's within the ruined error and you can find it to the northeast of the council chambers. You'll want to make sure you have the waypoint unlocked but this is actually a fairly short run from the surface which you likely unlock during the campaign. Alternatively, you can just right click a key within your inventory and it will bring you there directly and then you can just hit travel and off you'll go. Once you get there, just head up to the door. Going in and using the same key, you can hit enter. You'll need to clear each tier in order to unlock the subsequent one. These tiers are going to have modifiers that increase enemy damage and health as you get further. For this video we're going to show tier 4. In general tiers 1 through 3 are pretty straightforward and you should be able to clear those as your character progresses and gets higher level. Tier 4 is definitely a step up as you can see from the modifiers and the doors that you find throughout this dungeon will actually increase those modifiers further. You're really going to want somewhat of a meta character or just a really strong build in order to clear this dungeon. On the first floor we're looking for two corners, either the lower left or the upper right. There's going to be two doors that we can use to proceed further in the dungeon. In this case, I found the lower left corner pretty early, and I know that because of this nook, which has the potential to be one of those entrances. So this being the lower left corner means that the door to the next floor is going to be along this edge on the map. If it's not there, it'll be along this edge, so we don't care at all about the middle or the right side of this map. We're just going to run along this edge until we find one of the doors, and then we'll compare the modifiers to the other door and choose our path forward. Here we found that first door and we can click on it to see what the modifiers are. 60% increased damage, 90% enemy health is the best option you can actually get in the tier four. We're gonna go ahead and look for the other door just to show you a comparison. On reaching this other door, we can click and you'll see that these modifiers are higher. Keep in mind that if you're hunting items, the modifier up top may grant you more of what you're looking for. But in the case of T4 in this video example, we're just looking for the lowest modifiers to enemy damage and health increase our chances of success. You can simply backtrack to the previous door or your preferred one and hit proceed. That'll bring us to the next floor. And the next floor has no enemies, it's just a tutorial for the upcoming boss. On this floor, you'll just move forward until you reach this root wall and just destroy it will allow you to have access to the kindling inside. You can walk up to this kindling and you'll actually see that the health bar is increasing. When it gets full, it will burn. Alternatively, you can use the D button to send your amber onto the kindling, which will do the same thing this is a preferred method when dealing with the boss mechanics, so I recommend you get used to doing that. Hitting D again will return that to your character, and keep that in mind for the upcoming boss as well. You'll find the door in one of the pathways again, and just go through, doesn't matter where that door was. Next floor is identical to the very first floor, and you may encounter blockades on either of these floors, whether these be rocks, parts of the tree that have fallen, doesn't matter. Again, we're looking for the lower left or the upper right corner, and then we're going to proceed around. In this case, I don't want to deal with these blockades. There's likely going to be far more than two. So I'm actually going to go to the upper right corner. And as you run more of these maps, you'll get more familiar with that. And this will just increase your efficiency or your speed overall. Upon reaching this upper right corner, we can now go in this direction along the edge and looking for any potential openings. If we hit the next corner, then we'll just go down and look along that edge as well. The doors will always be in those positions. So you can be safe that this will cut down your time. If you happen to get a modifier that increased the potential drops of something you're looking for on the first floor, you could alternatively clear this whole area and get some, hopefully get some upgrades. Here we have the first door with 80% damage, 110% enemy health, and the additional modifier you get there will have to do with the boss drops. It's not required in order to get the mountain pieces off of the boss, so keep that in mind when you're determining which door you like. The second door is 90% and 100%, so I'm actually going to return to the first door and then we'll proceed on to the bosses. This room is just a pass through. You can speak to the NPC if you like, and although there's no door shown on the minimap, it'll always be in the top or the northern direction. Simply clicking on this and hitting proceed will bring you forward. For this boss and the next boss, the encounters will begin as soon as you go in, so make sure you're prepared. The next fight will begin as soon as you hit that, and I strongly recommend going to the left side. You want to break this root wall, send your amber in in order to start burning the kindling, and then get to the right side of the map. If you have enough damage, you can break down this root wall, and then we want to hang out here until we see the large AoE. That will always happen on the left side before it happens on the right. So by being on the right side, you can see it displayed and then time your traversal skill. Or if you have enough movement speed, you can simply move out of the way. Hit D to return your kindling to your character. And then D again in order to send it over to the next pile. At this point, we're waiting for that AoE again. So we're waiting for the large circle to appear over here and just moving to dodge some of these falling projectiles. You'll get stunned fairly often in this encounter. 
There it is. Now we're going to move over to the left. That mechanic will one-shot your character, so make sure you're avoiding that. At this point, we can return the kindling, and we're ready for the next area. Make sure that if you have a ward build that you're letting your ward top off or waiting for any cooldowns, as the next boss will begin immediately as well. This boss will also yield a number of one-shot mechanics, so make sure that you're ready to move and staying safe at all times when possible. You want to get to the opposite side of that single beam, it'll split into two and come towards your character. Get out of the clonal attack, dodge the orb spinning around the boss, and get in as close as possible before that AoE goes off. If you manage to do all of those successfully, you'll manage to clear tier 4. Clearing tier 4 has some advantages, as there's certain items that only drop off the highest difficulty. If you're not looking to farm those items, it's strongly recommended you farm a lower difficulty. Although the chances of the drops may be lower, for other items, it's going to be a lot easier since the modifiers don't scale as high. Best of luck as you go through here, I have done nothing but exclusively tier 4 runs while filling out this stash tab, and the percentages of which I've had for drops, and for the chest, which is likely something you may be targeting if you're doing tier 4, I've had one of those, three shields, and a number of boots and helms, so be prepared to do a lot of runs and have some frustrating runs from all the one-shot mechanics. After picking up your loot, there will again be an entrance that is not shown on the minimap, and make sure you don't miss this if you're looking to loot the chests that are beyond this dungeon. By clicking in this, you'll be transported into another area. If we can go forward, you'll have access to your stash, but more importantly, you'll see yet another door with some glowing eyes. This is last epoch's version of a gold sink or just a use for your gold. What you see here is a modifier adds a chest that drops several exalted items. You can decline this and get another option. In fact, you can decline or accept as often as you would like until you run out of gold. This is yet another option with some exalted items. I'm going to decline that just in this particular case. In fact, we're going to decline a lot of these. We're going to look for a couple that may have some unique options. It can often take some time to do so, but again, there's no time limit on this. When you finally get one you like, you can see the cost associated with accepting this, and this can become quite costly. You'll also have access to seeing how much gold your character has, and you can easily spend all of your gold by doing this, so make sure you're ready to lose whatever you put forward. By hitting accept, these modifiers will be applied, and you'll continue to get more modifiers. So as mentioned, you can just keep doing this for as long as you like. And to continue to decline, and here we can get 30% more items. I'm specifically looking for uniques at this point, so I'm gonna decline a lot of these as we go forward. to get another unique there. I think this shows enough for the example. At this point, when you're ready, you can go ahead and hit enter the vault, proceed forward, and you'll actually see these chests begin to populate on the map as you get towards the center of this platform. Depending on how many options you chose, you may have multiple chests. In this example, we're just showing one chest, but there's potential to get a ton of items through this. What you get from it is, however, random beyond what you've selected for the modifiers. In this example, we have five items. However, bear in mind that I have the Circle of Fortune faction, which actually causes all items of a set to drop when a single one does. So it's likely here that I got two unique items and one set item from that one chest. Again, you can populate more chests or use as many modifiers as you'd like. At this point, you can go down the other path to leave the dungeon. It'll bring you into the next zone, Corrupted Lake, or alternatively, you can just hit the map and go to wherever you'd like. If you're going back in, you can simply go back to the Lightless Arbor and use another key. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.